Hello and welcome to another Quality of Life Tools add-on demo. And, uh, well, this time we have a small collection of add-ons for you. Um, if you already own the full collection, don't worry, you'll get all of these for free. As always, for the last couple of years, I, uh, whenever I make a new add-on, I always add it for free to uh, the full collection. Mainly as my way of saying thank you for, well, buying it in the first place. I do appreciate that. Really, I really do. Um, but these ones are a small collection I'm releasing at the same time because they are very simple small add-ons, but bloody useful on a day-to-day -day basis. And because they're so small and simple, I, I, I didn't think it was really fair to, uh, you know, sell them all individually for a price. So I put them all in a nice little pack and uh, release them <laughs> cheap for you. Cheap, that's a bad word, isn't it? Inexpensive. Uh, I think uh, about $4 for these. Um, you can install them all at the same time by, let's just go to ba -ba -ba -ba, default and let's go download and that one. You can just navigate to your, your bonus tools, zip and, <laughs> and install the add-ons there. Um, but when you do it that way, you must bear in mind that you do need to activate them all individually. Um, so it's installed them all, but they still need to be activated individually, which is relatively easy. All you do is you just go down, find the call tools that are bah, 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 uh, install, so, and um, yeah, you, you, you're good to go in that case. Um, I will go through them all with you in a second. Let's just go to, do you know what? I'm going to restart this now. It's always good practice. There we go. Back again. So, uh, yeah, there we have contact menu, blah, 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 blah. All good to go there. Um, so, yes, context menu is, I'll, I'll go for this first because the thing we do need to do with that one is make sure that that one is context menu, that that one is activated last. Right, and the reason for that one being is that it collects all the other add-ons in, in a smart way. And I will go through that with you in a second. So, flipped faces, what is that? Well, on geometry, often you, you will find that it's misbehaving for some reason. You can't quite identify, and usually that will be because the normals are a bit messed up. Uh, by normals, you can check them in face orientation of the viewport overlays. And you can see when uh, an object is, or sorry, vertices or faces are pointing in the wrong direction. They're very, very obviously highlighted in this view. And you, you, you can see the reason for things being a bit messy there. It's not always super apparent. Um, it kind of is on this one because I have um, also a bevel modifier added to it. So it's pretty obvious that the things have got messed up there. Um, normally to fix that, what you would do is you would go into face orientation, select the... F <laughs> and then go into object edit mode, you would have to do, and select the faces that you're going to fix. Then go into mesh and then go into normals and flip and that would fix things for you there. That's very manual, it's many, many stages, and frankly, if you're working with lots and lots of objects, it can be a tedious pain in the bum. So what Flip Faces does is, it um, allows you to do any of those, let's just get back to when it was messy, there we go. Um, what Flip Faces does is basically allows you to stay in object mode, it'll fix things for you even while you're in object mode, and auto fix things for you there. As you can see, nice and clean. Um, when you do that, it gives you the option of recalculating. So if you want, for any reason, a face to be pointing the other direction, and that does happen sometimes, you want it to be the other direction. Um, and you flip faces, qual, oh, sorry, flip faces there. Um, if you have recalculate, it will normally, usually, try to 
ensure that everything is pointing in the same direction. It kind of auto fixes for you. But if you turn that off, it allows you to force things to be flipped. Okay. So, well, that's, um, <laughs> let's just get out of here. So that is flipped faces for you. Flip faces, autocorrect, all good. And like I say, that, that works in object mode. And then we have hole filler, which is sort of related, actually. Um, what that does is, again, allows you to stay in object mode and looks for and repairs holes in your meshes. When I say holes, I mean, well, usually missing faces when something is no longer watertight. Um, I'm sure any modeler will know how to fix these things manually, but again, that can usually be a bit of a pain in the bum. So what hole fixer does is it, um, well, just fills the holes. It, it looks for and auto repairs missing data or, or missing missing faces in, in uh, meshes, measure we can see. Let's go into a, another mode here. The object mode again. We don't have to go into edit mode at all for these things. Just hole filler and there we go. Fixed. This one, it even has an array of, um, of modifiers and all that sort of thing going on it. And it still works there. Uh, hole filler just fixes any holes it finds in the mesh. Okay. Um, nice and simple, really. So the next one is the origins, the origin tools, I guess. And what do they do? Well, during the process of modeling, often you will find the uh, origins of, of objects have a habit of moving around or not being where you expect them to be because of whatever. You see here, the origin is down there right now. So let's say, for example, we take these two objects and boom, 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 let's just make a bridge between them. Uh, cool. There we go. A plug in for another add on of mine. Uh, and also smart smooth. There we go. So now this object has its origin placed up here. As you've seen during the process, these things have a habit of just uh, moving around. What was I doing there? I don't know. Um, oh, there we go. Blah, 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 blah. For a roundy thing there. There we go. Uh, anyway, yeah, sorry. I do get distracted, don't I? Uh, yeah, the origin is, as you can see, uh, might be hard to see because of uh, YouTube, but it's uh, orange on orange. The origin is now up there. What we can do to move the origin, I usually like to have it at the base of an object. I find it that's just more uh, logical. It makes more sense to me to have it at the base of the object. So, qual uh, origin to base, and it will move it to the lowest point it can find on that object. And again, don't know if you can see it here, but now it's at the base there. And that is in world space. So whatever orientation you have the object, if you set origin to base, it moves it to the lowest point it can find. Okay, so that's pretty much that one. And what else do we have? We have the match origins. So let's make a couple of copies of this, blah, 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 blah. a few of those. And let's make a copy of this one. So any amount of objects and select your target object and you can match the origins. Um, this one is actually a bit of a, a weird one to describe, I guess, but you know it when you need it. And I find I use that one surprisingly often. It's just a handy little tool to have matching the origins of objects. Again, bear in mind that is in world space. So whatever parenting structure you have, it, it will um, make it the actual origin of the other object. So that one is where the other one used to be. Uh, say you would want it in the same place. All you do is match origins. There we go, match origins. That's that one, I guess. So finally, we have the transform tools, which is part of the bonus tools objects, bonus tools. So say you've been modeling on something and moving it into the scene and you've got it all positioned quite nicely. Uh, let's scale this as well. You know, all, all the things you would do. And later on, you realize, oh, I really wanted to make an addition to this. And it, it's quite messy working um, well in this angle and all that sort of nonsense. What you can do is make a copy of it and reset transforms and what that does is yeah you know, it's as it was before you started messing around with things and that makes it much easier to model with things not in situ but 
in, well, a, a more sensible orientation for actually doing the modeling. Uh, so let's take that for example, move that down there and merge these into one object. Uh, just for the sake of this one, what I'm also going to do is round, no, no, let's leave that as is. And so now, obviously, you, you want that to be where this is. I like to think of this add-on as more of a be like this add-on. So that one, we want to be like this. And call match transforms. And as you see, what that's done is replaced that one. We can optionally have that on or off. And yeah, it just, just makes everything as it should be. These two, for example, we also want them to be like that. So match transforms. It does multiple objects at the same time. Oh no, what went wrong, you might think. Well, I replaced them, but here we go. Everything is in the same orientation, the same transformations, all that sort of thing as the target. And again, at any time, if you want to revert that, just reset transforms and it's back to the way it was. And note also that this has all modifiers. It's got a whole load of modifiers on. No, it doesn't actually, not anymore. There we go, yes it does. Modifiers and they work as well, just as they did before. And that is, I think, pretty much it. So that's basically it for Bonus Tools 1. Uh, one, because, do you know what? I think this is the first of probably a, a few of these. Uh, I'm not going to promise another one next week, but, uh, you know, as I, I make these smaller, handy, handy little things, um, I'll probably make a few more of these little packs as well as the larger add-ons or the larger, more complex add-ons. These small ones also have a lot of utility in Blender. And again, they just make day-to-day -day life a little more easy or a little more enjoyable. Thank you so much again. Uh, well, for bearing with me. Uh, long video again. I don't seem to be able to do these ones short, do I? Anyway, thank you. Thank you again for now. And bye-bye. <laughs>